we're going to take a look at blend ranges and see exactly what they can do. So here's a very clear example. This is a moon image. Obviously the moon is mostly white and we've got a black background. So if I go into the blend ranges dialog found here, all I need to do is drag this left hand node down to the bottom and I've basically removed all the dark tones from the layer. Now the great thing about the blend options is you're not limited to two node points. You can click, drag to create more of them, but also you can uncheck linear and you can have a logarithmic curve instead. So you can really fine tune your blend ranges. We've also got some pretty nasty fringing on this moon, which we can of course remove using defringing, but there is a video that will show you how to do that. So another great use for blend ranges is you're not just limited to modifying the master channel. You can alter the way individual color channels are blended. So where this might come in useful is you see in this image, we have a mostly blue sky. I've got here a sky image pre-prepared that I'm going to select and paste across to this image. I'll just drag it out to fit. Now, typically for a sky replacement, we would usually mask it. You know, we would do a selection around the building because it's got quite a few complicated areas and it would generally take some time. But using blend ranges, there is another way. So if I turn this layer back on, go into the blend ranges dialog, this time I want to do two things differently. First, I want to select the blue channel. Then I want to be using underlying composition ranges. So I'll click, drag this node down, uncheck linear, and I want to add another node point and drag that further down and find a nice balance so that the sky doesn't blend too much into the original blue layer. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but to get rid of the bits that have seeped into the building here, all we need to do with the sky layer selected is add a mask layer, select the paintbrush tool, and then take the hardness down and go ahead and just quickly paint over the building. It's a bit of a rough job, but you should hopefully get the idea. There we go. So I'll go ahead and turn the sky layer off and then turn it back on. So you can see with very little time, we can achieve a pretty good looking sky replacement. We can then go in and add further adjustments to help the sky blend into the image. But by using blend ranges, we've cut out a lot of the complicated mask work we would typically have had to do. Well, that's all for this video. If you have any questions or queries, please ask on the official Affinity forums. Thank you for watching.